Okay, this is a little demonstration of why you should always plot your data when you do regression analysis using a little demonstration known as Anscombe's Quartet. So let's take a look. I've opened up our studio here and this is a little script that imports the Anscombe data and runs the regression analysis and some plots. And again, the idea is to show why you must plot and eyeball your data before you do any regression analysis to make sure that the data makes sense and that the regression results are going to be meaningful. Anscombe's Quartet was uh, an illustration that was developed in 1973 and it's named for the statistician who came up with it, Francis Anscombe. And uh, you can look it up on Wikipedia if you want to learn more. So it involves a, a little fake data set which I'm going to open up here, read into R, hit the run button and it's going to load a couple packages and now here's the uh, Anscombe data set. Let me open that and we can just take a quick look at it. And you'll notice it consists of four XY variable pairs. So X1 and Y1 and you can see the values there and again these are made up data. They don't respond, correspond to anything real. And each of these uh, XY pairs has 11 observations in it. So going back to the script Let's take a look at the descriptive statistics for these pairs using a stargazer command. So down in the console here, we have the Anscombe data. And you'll notice that for each of these variables, x1, x2, x3, they all have the same mean and standard deviation, 9 and 3.32 in each case, x1, x2, etc. And the same goes for y1 and Y2. They all have the same mean 7.5 and the same standard deviation 2.03. So these uh, pairs of variables X and Y are rather similar in their overall descriptives. Now Anscombe's demonstration involves running the simple regressions of Y on X for each of these pairs of variables. So looking at the regression command here, uh, reg1 is the regression of Y1 on X1 and why same for regression 2, etc. So let's run those and I'm going to put the results into a single stargazer table so we can compare the regression results across these four XY variable pairs. So here's the stargazer regression table and again we've got four regressions, one in each column and you'll notice in column 1 the regression of Y1 on X1 has an intercept down here of 3.00 and a slope of 0.5 and the slope is statistically significantly different from zero and if we then look at each of the other regressions y2 on x2, y3 on x3, y4 on x4, on x4 we see that they all have the same slope 0.5 and in fact they all have the same intercept term at least to rounding error of 3. All right. So they all basically are coming up with exactly the same straight line an upward sloping line with a slope of 0.5 and the same intercept. You might also notice that each of these regressions has the same R squared of about 0.667. Uh, that is that each regression is explaining about two-thirds of the variation in the Y variable. So these regressions from just a tabular point of view look to be almost identical in almost every respect. Now, is that really the case? Are they really doing an equally good job of representing the data? And to see whether they are or not, let's do the plots. And this is really where we see why we want to do these scatter plots. So qplot, uh, again, is the uh, ggplot uh, command for doing uh, various types of plotting. So we're going to do a simple scatter plot here. And I have uh, set the scales of the x and y axes so that these plots will all be fairly comparable to each other. So I'm going to run the first one. This is x1 and y1. And there it is. And let me zoom it here and uh, blow this up a little bit so you can see what's going on in this plot. So this is x1 and y1. And there's that nice regression line that I've added in there, the blue line. And you can see that this is a pretty nice looking uh, regression here. It, the regression line is going through the center of the data. It looks like a pretty linear relationship, although obviously there's some uh, noise in the error terms there, but uh, this looks pretty good. Now let's see if the fit and representation of the data is similar for these other XY pairs. So I'm going to run X2 and Y2 
And again, let me zoom this up a little bit. So here's the, the plot of x2 and y2 with the regression line. And now you can see that this uh, regression, straight linear regression line, is a pretty poor representation of what's going on in this relationship between x and y for x2 and y2. The data are clearly in a curvy, parabolic type relationship. The straight line is capturing a general upward drift, but especially at the extremes, it's doing a very poor job of capturing what's going on in the data. In fact, once we get out past uh, 11 or 12 here in the data, the curve has started to descend whereas our linear representation suggests that it's continuing to rise. So here would be a case where a nonlinear estimation, uh, perhaps a quadratic, would be uh, much preferable. Now let's go on to the third pair, x3, y3, and plot that. So again, making this a little bit bigger. Now here's an interesting case where an outlier is really pulling the regression around. And we can see that the majority of the dots, in fact all but one of the dots, seem to line up on a pretty straight line. And that straight line appears to have a much uh, lower slope, or at least substantially lower slope, than the estimated regression line, which is the blue line. Why is that? Because up here is this outlier observation that is tugging the line upward. And this is a good example of how an outlier can have a disproportionate impact on the regression estimation. Now why is that an outlier? This would require further inquiry. Is that a legitimate observation? It's just a fairly unusual value of y that happens to be a valid data point? Is it perhaps a data entry error? Uh, this is not always easy to figure out, but it's very clear that the simple regression line here, thanks to that outlier, is not doing a very good job capturing the relationship between x and y for the vast majority of the data. Now finally, let's look at the plot of x4 and y4. Run that. Zoom it up a little bit again. And it's going regression 4. Now here's a case where it's an even more extremely influential outlier. All of the data points but one line up on this vertical line. So for those data points, there's actually no variation in x at all. And in fact, you can't really regret, uh, estimate a regression line if there's no variation in x. Because remember, we're trying to figure out the, relate, the uh, conditional value of y, conditional on x. Uh, but there is one outlier here that does have a different value of x. And in fact, the whole slope is being estimated uh, off of that location of that uh, unusual observation up there. And clearly, here's another example where, thanks to an outlier observation, the blue regression line is not capturing what's going on with the vast majority of the data. And I, certainly, you should be very reluctant to draw any conclusions about the nature of the relationship between x and y based on a regression like this. And again, what's going on with that unusual observation is something that should require further inquiry. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is simple. Anscombe's demonstration shows us that we should always plot our data when we're going to do regression analysis. And if you're running a more complicated regression, say a multiple regression with uh, a number of regressors, it's always a good idea to plot the y variable against each of those regressors and see if there's uh, any kind of systematic uh, outliers or nonlinearities in any of those relationships that would suggest that you should uh, do something uh, to inquire into the data or perhaps use some nonlinear methods.